Welcome to the Coming Apocalypse. Evangelist and Pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Welcome, this is the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Begley, and this program has to do with a prophetic event that Jesus said will happen in the last days. It is the building of the third temple in Jerusalem. Solomon built it. It was powerful. He said the post of the doors even moved at the glory of God. The train filled the temple. And we realized that when it was reconstructed again, that there was always those who wanted to tear it down. Twice the temple of the Lord has been tore down, but it is prophesied a third time. And it will be a spectacle, I believe, that will captivate the world. And even though people will be looking at the temple as a tremendous accomplishment and and, and a way of bringing peace and getting people to pull together, I believe it will also bring about the revelation of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, as the Messiah and the Savior of the world. If you'll grab a Bible, let's go to Daniel chapter 9, verses 25 through 27. Let's read what the Word of the Lord says as it concerning Uh, what Jesus would later call the abomination of desolation. But there's more to that than just that. In Daniel 9, 25, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again, the wall, even the troubles time and after three score and two weeks shall messiah be cut off but not for himself and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood and unto the end of the war desolations are determined and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week which would be seven years and in the midst of the week He shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. It talks about a covenant with many being confirmed. I remember when uh, there was a major peace negotiations were going on when John Kerry, the Secretary of State, was doing what's called shuttle diplomacy. He was back and forth from Cairo, Egypt to Amman, Jordan to uh, Jerusalem uh, to Ramallah meeting with uh, Palestinian president, uh, Palestinian authority president Mahmoud Abbas, uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and many other delegates from around the region trying to put together a peace accord, a two-state solution to bring peace to the Middle East. It has been one of the more focused things that the Obama administration has truly wanted to accomplish. And when they set the nine-month time period to try to make it happen, you know, there's a scripture in the scriptures tell us that uh, that there was two children in her womb and they were two uh, people, two different people, two different nations struggling in the womb. And we've seen that in Jerusalem. We've seen that in Israel between the Palestinian people and the people of Israel. They have, you know, the Jews and the Palestinians, it's been this struggle back and forth over this very small uh, sliver of land. And so how important is it that the temple be rebuilt? Well, to the Jewish people, it's extremely important. When you go to the Wailing Wall, they're there praying. and, And when you go all over Jerusalem the talk of the Temple Mount, and all around. But it's not just important to the Jewish people. The Temple Mount itself is also the third holiest site considered by Islam. 
And of course, Christians love to go there as well because they know this is the area that Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and the promises of the children of Israel, and we know that Jesus Christ walked along the cobblestone streets of that city, and his prophetic words continue to ring into our ears, into our spirit. And the third temple, the rebuilding of it, will do more than just bring a world together for a short period of time, 42 months, let's say, or in the midst of the seven weeks or three and a half years, but it will also be the time when the Antichrist will walk into that same temple before the worshipers of God and declare that he is God. And so a lot of folks say to me, well, pastor, let's just hope they never build it if the Antichrist is coming. The Antichrist is coming. I mean, you're not going to stop the Antichrist from coming. That is a prophetic word. It is on its way. Just like Jesus is coming, you're not going to stop him from coming. Matter of fact, that's what the devil is literally trying to do. Lucifer wants to prohibit Christ from returning and, and on the Mount of Olives, where it says that in Zechariah chapter 12. The Bible says in Zechariah chapter 12, it talks about Jerusalem will become a cup of trembling and a burdensome stone unto all people. All people that burden themselves with it will be uh, broken into pieces. Uh, so we have in Zechariah 12, verses 1, 2, and 3, a significant prophetic a uh, word from the Lord, from the prophet Zechariah, that Jerusalem will become this place of trembling. Why? It's because of the Temple Mount and the rebuilding of the temple. Now, uh, in Matthew 24, Jesus said these words in verse 15. When asked about all the signs of the end times, he said, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understand. Jesus is referring to Daniel 9, 27, the covenant that will be confirmed and the fact that the abomination of desolation will take place. It will be an abomination for the Antichrist to walk into the temple of the Lord and declare that he is God but that's exactly what he will do. And multiple billions of the people of the world will follow him. It's good to know, though, that these events are going to take place. And as Christians, we need to be ready and prepared and to understand why there's so much tension. I mean, the three religions of the apocalypse have got to be Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. They're all converging on the same spot. Now, I was blessed to go to the Temple Mount this year, to walk up on the Temple Mount, and I actually walked all the way around the Dome of the Rock. Um, there were Jews there, there were Christians there, there were Muslims there. The tension up there, <laughs> you could cut it with a knife. Yet at the same time, I realized the importance of the events that were about to unfold. And uh, I was blessed to meet Rabbi Yehuda Glick, which we plan on uh, in the upcoming programs, interviewing him right here on this network. Let me just say to you that when I met with him, he had already been shot four times. In October of 2014, a Palestinian, a would-be assassin, drove up to him in a motorcycle, got off, and shot him point blank four times in the chest. He hollered, of course, Allah Akbar, and said to Glick that he was an enemy of Allah. Glick survived this assassination attempt and told me that he said, when I was unconscious, the Lord came to him and whispered in his ear and said, Yehuda, I love you. Uh, now that he has survived it, I interviewed him, and it's on YouTube. If you go to my YouTube channel, YouTube channel 34, you can find it, where it's a four-part interview on YouTube. I think you'd really enjoy it. But the next interview coming uh, that's going to be right here on this network will be powerful. And so I want you to be prepared for that because the timing is incredible. He just got back from Turkey where he met with some of the Islamic leaders and they discussed the Temple Mount. They discussed the temple. Now, there is blueprints already been drawn up by the Temple Institute there in Jerusalem. And even Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has looked at these blueprints and says that these make a lot of sense. Now, what they are 
it would be a modified temple on the Temple Mount adjacent to the Dome of the Rock. In other words, the Dome of the Rock and the temple would be on the same mountain together. There would be no outer court because there's not enough room for an outer court. And that's exactly what the Bible says is going to happen in the book of Revelation chapter 11. I mean, it's incredible. Uh, let's read from there. This is a chapter that tells you just how important and how really in time prophetically things are developing. If you go to Revelation chapter 11, verse 1, and there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall they tread underfoot 40 and two months. Well, that's exactly what Daniel said in Daniel 9, 25 through 27. It says that the, in the midst of the week, which is three and a half years of the seven year period or 42 months, three and a half years. There will be a temple built, and at the halfway point, look what happens in verse 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies, and if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Now, Jesus knew that the event of the abomination of desolation was coming, and he also knew that this would bring about the, uh, the climax, if you will, the moment of truth when the world begins to realize who are these two witnesses now, clothed in sackcloth, preaching with the power of God, and here's their message. Yeshua is the Messiah. And they will preach that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. And they will be anointed as they walk the streets of Jerusalem. The temple will be glistening in the sun. And the people will be gathering both probably at the Dome of the Rock and at the temple. And the outer court will be open for the Gentiles who will be walking around in between uh, the facilities. Yehuda Glick had this meeting in Turkey with some of these leading Muslim leaders. And what came out of it was one of the uh, leaders of the um, uh, imams, I want to get his name, Adnan Oktar. Adnan Oktar. He met with Glick and he said these words. And I found it to be so prophetic. I I just said, I stopped in my tracks when I read this and said, are you serious? Did this man say what I just read? Quote, we will see that the children of Abraham will hug in the Holy Land and we will see Messiah. Are you serious? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. wait a minute, time out, time out. We're talking about an, an Islamic imam in Turkey meeting with the leading rabbi of Israel a man that's been leading the cause for Jews to be allowed to pray on the Temple Mount, the man who helped as one of the founders of the Temple Institute, who's now, as we speak, uh, the, the president of the Temple Mount Heritage Foundation, who suffered four shots in the chest for trying to get this done, who wants the temple built and is leading the way. He's standing there in Istanbul, Turkey, and the imam says to him, we will see. We will see the children of Abraham. And the children of Abraham, of course, is not just the Jews. It's not just, uh, you know, Abraham's son Isaac and Jacob and the 12 tribes. But folks, Abraham had a son named Ishmael. And Ishmael had many sons and many nations. So when this man says this, he's saying, we will see the children of Abraham. We'll hug in the Holy Land and we will see Messiah. Is he talking about Jesus Christ? the Messiah, and he goes on to say, quote, we regard you as a hero, speaking to Yehuda Glick. Your mission is not over. 
Your mission continues. We will see Messiah. We will see Solomon's temple. We will see all together pray. This is an exact quote by uh, this um, leading imam there in Istanbul, Turkey. Now, when I stepped back and saw that information and realizing the conversation that I had with Yehuda Glick, I realized that what's happening is the only way that the Solomon's temple, or if you will, the third temple, can be rebuilt has to mean peace and cooperation by all the three major religions. There's no question about that. And that's what Daniel 9, 27 says. It's a covenant. He confirmed the covenant with many. Again, it, for a covenant to be confirmed by many, it requires more than just two parties. It has to in, include others. And if you look at the nations that are surrounding uh, Jerusalem right now, or surrounding the Holy Land, the entire area, I mean, you've got the Saudi Arabians, you've got the Egyptians, the Jordanians, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, uh, you know, Israel is basically right in the middle of all of this. Iraq, of course, we is under such duress along with Syria with these uh, ISIS running through there. You have Iran that's plotting and working <laughs> to build a nuclear bomb. We've got the six superpowers trying to put together a deal with them. Uh, and, and you got Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel, screaming at the top of his lungs, saying, are you serious? You can't let these guys have the bomb. But at the same time, we understand that Benjamin Netanyahu, was, who was prophesied over at his brother's funeral by um, Dave Evans. And Dave Evans walks up to the young Netanyahu and says to him, thus saith the Lord, thou shalt be prime minister of Israel, not once but twice, and see the rebuilding of the temple. Here's what's unbelievable about that prophecy. Benjamin Netanyahu became prime minister in the 90s. That's once. And now he was reelected again. That's twice. And he has seen the blueprints to the third temple. Folks, you cannot have more biblical prophecy situations in current world events developing like we've never seen before. We've never seen anything like this. We know we're on the verge of something major taking place. And the whole time you see these things, it should help us all know that Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, will be coming soon for the bride. He is going to come. He is coming. Are you ready? Uh, I tell you something. Those of you watching on television... I just pray that God is blessing you. Matter of fact, we have seen such an impact from television. It's just, uh, just immediately a bump, big time, of folks coming to our ministry, find out about us. We believe that, the, folks, that the television ministry of Let's See Broadcasting and others, this is how you get the gospel to Jesus Christ. And so if you will, tell others, let people know about the coming apocalypse broadcast. Tell them, look. Look, there's some guy, he's out of the cornfields of Indiana. He's a little bit crazy, but he's really, really serious. And when you get into the word of God, it makes a lot of sense. Let him know that he cares about salvation. Let him know that this is the end times. And it's remarkable the things that's happening right now that pertain to the word of God. So do this and be blessed of the Lord. I, I tell you something right now, I'd love to just share with you that the temple I'm not, for me, I got Jesus. You know, I don't need the temple to be built. It doesn't make me any difference. But I study the word of God and I understand there are biblical prophecies that are going to come to pass. And these are not the only ones. Earthquakes in divers places, volcanoes erupting. Jesus said these words in Luke 21, verse 25 through 28. He said, for there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea, the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear of things coming upon the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then, then shall they see the sign of the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. And when you begin to see these things come to pass, look up, lift up your heads for your redemption 
draweth nigh. I'm telling you, if you can't get excited about that, I don't know what to do. I mean, Jesus is coming after a glorious church, one without spot or blemish or wrinkle or any such thing. We've been to life's flowing fountain. We've had a drink of the living water. We've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, and we're looking for the coming of the Lord. Do you realize the early church in the book of Acts, every message they preached was on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and his soon return. That's all they preached. And that was the early church. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and his soon return. It's been 2,000 years. What should the message be now? I think it should be the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and his imminent return. Folks, we are in the last days, no question about it. And so as we begin to see these uh, negotiations, you're going to see negotiations between major religious leaders because everybody's going to want to have some kind of credit in the building of this temple. Now, let's go back to Yehuda Glick for a minute because he shared with us in Genesis chapter 2, Verse 12, it says, during the creation, God says, and the land, the gold in the land is good. The gold in the land is good. And for 6,000 years, no gold was ever mined out of Israel. Solomon had copper mines. They did trading and bartering to get the gold. They used for the temple of the Lord, as well as the, the trees out of Lebanon, the cedar trees. Okay. But Yehuda Glick and his group of um, those that have been investigating, looking for uh, minerals, precious stones, have uncovered a vein of gold in Mount Elat worth somewhere between $1 and $10 billion. And uh, so Rabbi Yehuda Glick says, and he owns the mineral rights to it. He was given that permission from the uh, government of Israel. So he says what's going to happen is that gold will be mined and it will be used to help fund the building of the third temple and will actually be in, used as the plating on the inside, the golden plating on the inside of the temple. Why in the world did this all come to pass? How in the world could this be coming together just so exactly as the scripture says it's because we're living in the last days. We're in the prophetic hour, and time is running out. Now, I've noticed that there's some different things taking place around the world and that affects uh, folks in many different ways. There is extreme weather patterns. There is uh, asteroids that are racing by the earth, They're, and they are getting more and more and more. Matter of fact, even NASA just teamed up with the National nuclear security agency and where they're going to work together to build some type of a weapon to blow asteroids out of the space before they hit the earth now why would they be doing that other than the fact they know the odds are increasing because the number of asteroids are coming the bible tells us we will have a deep impact i don't know when but you can read it in the book of revelation chapter 8 there's no question it will take place so if you know that these things are increasing, earthquakes, uh, different diseases, whether it be Ebola or some others, if you can see all of these signs, can you see the signs of the times? In other words, what's coming together right now is an apocalyptic scenario where God is saying this world is coming to an end, but I'm going to give a new heaven. There will be a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness. And he's going to make a city for the, the children of the king, those that have been saved. I tell you what, God is doing great things. I'm going to be preaching a conference, a Bible prophecy conference down in Dallas, Texas on September the 12th at the K. Hutchinson Convention Center. I would love to see you there. It would be awesome. Also, that same month, September the uh, 27th through September 30th, so 27th through the 30th, I'll be preaching in Hyman, Pennsylvania at a church called Tri-State Ministries with Pastor Steve Leidig. It is a powerful church on fire for God. 
and we'll be preaching a blood moon revival as the fourth and final blood moon of the four blood moon tetrad will appear. It's a super blood moon it's, and it will be on, it will be visible from Jerusalem and it, this will be the Feast of Tabernacles. And oh, by the way, you will not see a four blood moon tetrad again on four high Jewish feast days for 400 and some years. Or in other words, this is it. What will happen? Well, let's wait and see. Look at the events that's surrounding Israel right now. Look at how the Jews have been persecuted. Look how the Christians are being slaughtered in the Middle East. Understand that all the pieces are on the table. I mean, if this was a puzzle, it's 80% done, maybe more. And so now the pieces that are left are coming together faster. It's exponentially, we're racing toward eternity. Are you saved? Why don't you do this right now? Why don't you go to my website? Go right now to www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. If you want to be saved, there are people in the chat room live right now. I'll be there. And you can log in and type in the chat room, I'm here from television. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I understand time is running out. I need to have a change of life anyway. The devil has beat me up. He's messed me up. My home's a wreck. My life's out of whack. And, and the, I can see the world's falling apart. And I want to get saved. I want to get born again. I want to be ready when the Lord comes. This would be the greatest move of your life. So do it right now. Go to my website, www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. That's www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. And give your life to Jesus Christ. We are running out of time. I'm telling you, God is moving in the midst of our people. And he's coming soon. And when he comes, he'll come like a thief in the night. When we least expect it, here he will be. He's, the Bible says as lightning goes from the east to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. I'll see you next week right here on the coming apocalypse. Thank you so much for watching the broadcast. I really appreciate it. And I'll tell you something. If you'd like to know more about some of our books that we've written, go to our website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. That's www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. I've even got music CDs. I actually have a couple country gospel music CDs that we recorded that I think you'll really enjoy. I have five books that I've written. This is my newest one, Jerusalem Jihad. Jerusalem Jihad. This has to do about an end time apocalyptic scenario that includes the rebuilding of the temple, also uh, the two witnesses, and uh, it's a powerful presentation, if you will, on how things are starting to come together here in the last days. So again, check out all of our books, uh, CDs, and everything else we have, and your donations are greatly appreciated at our website. God bless you, in Jesus' name.